The primary role for heat and ice is to reduce pain. With pain comes tightness and decreased movement. If you add heat and ice, we can reduce the pain, allowing you to move a little bit easier, which can help you recover faster. Unfortunately, you have to experiment and determine whether heat or ice actually helps reduce your pain so you can increase your movement. Whether it's acute pain or chronic pain, uh, there's no real hard evidence that one is superior than the other. Where you get your heat or ice is up to you, but I'm not talking about the ointments or the gels that you can buy over the counter. They have chemicals that make it feel hot or make it feel cold, but they don't actually change the temperature of your skin. Now, I have another video that addresses over-the-counter products. The heat you get could be from a hot water bottle, a hot blanket, hot shower, jacuzzi, sauna, doesn't really matter. The ice could be real ice, it could be an ice pack, it's up to you. In general, it is thought that heat tends to relax our muscles and relax our body. So while you're in a hot shower or a jacuzzi, you could be stretching your muscles. When it comes to heat, you generally want whatever is just tolerable so that you can relax the muscles and the tissues there. Cold, on the other hand, helps with reducing pain sensation when you're stretching tight muscles. So if you put cold on tight muscles, and as it gets cold for about 10 or 15 minutes, then you can start stretching that muscle as well. So you see, our body is designed that either heat or cold might actually help you. So whether you use heat or ice, or maybe even both, because you may find that both actually help you, the goal is to reduce your pain so you can increase your mobility so you can recover faster.